question, David. I wanted to start this off by saying that, you know, I messed up, man. And this last game made me realize it because it wasn't until, like, like we had the lead. We had the 18-point lead, but it wasn't until about five minutes left in the fourth quarter where I finally settled down. And I was like, okay, we're going to win this thing. To me, I, I was still on the edge of my seat. It's bad. Well, part of it is because we let up so many leads last year mm-hmm. that I just yeah, I'm still building trust. And I ran across this fun little tidbit of information. Caleb Williams, only two NFL rookies have had 75% completion, 225 yards, and four passing touchdowns in a game. One of them was Caleb Williams yesterday. I believe I sent this to you, so you might know it. Do you know who the other one is? I don't think you sent it to me, so no, I don't know it. Cade McNown. No! On the Bears? On the Bears. Oh, no. So this is what I mean. Like, ah, why? Why does that have to exist? Why can't it just all be great without any history of (laughs) this example happening and it's still failing? Like, why does it have to? Ah, whatever. But. You know, we've gotten a lot of comments recently that have been like, hey, guys, cool it. Which, by the way, we're we're not we're not the hype train here. Like, we're usually the ones cooling it, whatever. But, hey, guys, cool it. Two very terrible opponents. That's why you guys did good, blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, like, you got to do it against the Packers. You got to do it against this. And my reply was like, man, we're not living in the future. We're living in the moment. And in the moment right now, we're going to enjoy this because we haven't had many of these opportunities to enjoy some damn good football games like that. So, man, yeah, I, I, I'm i going to be happy. I'm going to give credit when credit's due, just like I give blame when blame is due. You know what I mean? Just like I give criticism when criticism is due. This was a great, great game. Awesome. Awesome. If we're going over our instant reactions to the Jaguars game, like, I mean, I had I haven't had as much fun. This is the first time this year, also, where I just locked in and watched every minute and watched every second, and it didn't go the way I expected it to. But it was in a good way. I expected it to be a low scoring, uh, you know, like a rock fight kind of Jaguars kind of suck, we kind of suck type of situation, and it was not that. And you need to beat the shit out of bad teams when you get the chance. And man. Like bears are not disappointing. I it, we've been so damaged. We we are such damaged goods. We can't. We don't know what love is like. But like somebody's trying to love us right now, and we're not letting it happen. Because if any if if the Raiders had Caleb Williams right now, and we saw the Raiders do this for six weeks, we'd be like the Raiders are back. The Raiders are good. But we as Bears fans, maybe like us and Philly fans, Philadelphia fans are the two most jaded fan bases where we just don't accept good things that happen to us. We're just ready for the negative that I'm, I'm this close to just hopping on the bandwagon and Caleb is, Oh, Caleb. I love Caleb so much. Yeah. Well, dude, you know, I don't know if you saw the, the after show press conference, but he spent like a good amount of time talking about that one interception. Now he threw. Which was really, really bad. It was Which was really really bad. bad. And it's really, really good that he is still focused on improving and not just riding the high train, being like, no, I had a great game and this and that. No, no, listen, you're always going to make mistakes. There's always going to be something to take out of the game that you can learn and improve from. And it's important that this kid's head is in the right place. And, yeah, listen, he's checked off every single box. I mean, from maturity to attitude to – confidence leadership leadership all of it it's just so funny thinking about the offseason and all that bs going around you're right half of chicago's starting to paint their nails and people are hyped man people are hyped now i I think for me and you you know i had this team at three and three at this point they're four and two like so for me i have to say they are exceeding my expectations um i don't know what do you think now going into this bye week? Is this team where you expected it to be, or are they ahead of where you thought they would be? They are way, way, way further than where I thought they would be at this point, I would say. If if I had to – because we can play the game of, you know, we should have lost to Tennessee, but we should have beat uh, Indy. We should have 
beat Houston, we should have lost them. We can do all that all day, and it's 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 lame and it's lazy and all every that year stuff. for are, every team, man. Every year for every team. Yeah, you can play exactly. Game. Like the Ravens lost the fucking Raiders this year. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't. So um, you are what your record says you are, Bill Parcells, and you're four and two. Um, they are far exceeding my expectations. They're definitely like at this rate a year ahead. And I don't want to look too far ahead of this season either, but this season can end up very, very quickly and very easily as a eight and eight season, right? Like you lose a few divisional games, you lose a few matchups at the end of the season that look not too good at this point. You look forward into the end of the season. You got like 49ers, Seahawks, all the division games, all kind of back to back with those sprinkled in like that shit could end up really, really nasty. So I'm not going to, we're not going to future plan right here, but as of right now, four and two and, and the way they're doing it. And we said this from the very beginning, the eye test matters so much. Shane Waldron is not Luke Getze. He can take some criticisms and make adjustments. He's not perfect, but there have been significant adjustments made from this team from week two to week six. And you got to give credit where credit is due. Caleb is the greatest quarterback I've seen in 50 years on the Chicago Bears. It's the greatest quarterback we've seen so far. I'm I'm really close to freaking out about it. And the way it's being done is really, really important. And the way that like even the Jags game went and we talked about the eye test. We came out super, super flat in the first quarter. And that's a long amount of time. That's 25% of the game. It does matter how, how you start and how you finish. It does matter because that's how these real games that really matter are going to end up going is when you play a good team and they kick your ass in the first quarter. Like, can you respond in the second, third and fourth quarter? So this, it does matter. It's a Jacksonville team. So it's not like as big of a sample size or as like in terms of high stakes, it's not as high stakes of a situation. But it does matter that like that's a skill that you can demonstrate that you're willing to do. We talked about the Shane Waldron not scripting 15 plays, which is unheard of in the NFL. Crazy. And then, you know, Matt, it's insane. But he's starting to do it and he's starting to adjust and he's talking to his coaching staff and he's talking to his players. And they're doing things that the players expect and the coaches expect and players above him expect. And it is what it is, you know, like. I was not a fan of Shane Waldron. It felt like Luke Getzey 2.0. But my instant reaction from the Jags game is it's it's all incremental steps in the right direction. And I, I don't want to get too excited because I don't – and we started off so hard on the coaching staff. But you got to give credit where credit is due. Yep. They are growing and they are improving and they are listening. And that is – like more than anything, and I've told you this, I, I teach – sports and I coach sports and all that stuff. The number one thing you can do as a coach is be flexible, be malleable based on what you have available, what you are learning on the fly. And like, this is hard coaching. This is, this is the challenge of coaching is like doing everything on the fly and changing as it goes and as it happens. And they're doing a really, really good job the last three weeks. Will it continue? I don't know, but it's really, really good.